You're listening to Aligned and Unfiltered with Daniela, Demi, and Ness. We're making spirituality real, raw, and relatable. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. (sighs) Ness, you're giving me a funny (laughs) stare. Did I say sorry already? (laughs) No, no, you didn't. I was going to say mentally, I was going to say good morning, my loves, but then I didn't know what time it was that you'd be listening. So hello from whatever time it is, wherever Mm. you are, whatever dimension you're in. Time doesn't exist. (laughs) I like that, whatever dimension you're in. Oh my goodness, I just had a visual of all sorts listening to us. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we've got our galactics with us. Mm, For sure. people. For sure. And on that note, today we are going to be covering the wonderful topic Mm. of the dark night of the soul. Mm. I'm sure you've probably heard that term before. And if you haven't, stay tuned. Yeah. I'm intrigued about this episode. Yeah, I feel like this is going to have a little bit of a mixed response, which is going to be really good. Um, I, I'm i seeing that we're going to have the combination of people who are kind of like, yep, I'm already aware of this, been through it, done that, moving through it constantly and consistently. And then we're going to have other people going, oh my God, is that what I'm going through? Mm. That makes so or much what, sense. Like what I went through. Yeah. 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 However so, many years ago. Um, or I was in that second category when it first came up because I yeah. didn't know what the name for it was, but I was like, oh yeah, fuck, I can relate. Mm. Like your time in this my life. This was the time and da, 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 da. So I think we'll have a lot of people that will really resonate. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, let's start off with what is a spiritual awakening because a dark night of the soul is a part of a spiritual yeah. awakening, right? They fit in. Yeah. yeah. Does anyone want to go? Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's start and then I, we're just like all staring at I each other. I literally only have one word that's popping into my head. So maybe I start go off with it. the word and yeah. someone can bounce. For sure. But when I think spiritual awakening, I think awareness. Yeah, oh, for I, that's sure. what I was thinking as well. For sure. Well, we move through... Um, Actually, I'm going to be totally um, transparent with this. We actually don't all experience a spiritual awakening within this lifetime. Mm. There will be some people who actually don't experience it within this lifetime. I'm going to say that if you're tuned in and you're listening to us and you're with us, that you are more than likely going through a spiritual awakening you have been through one you have that awareness because there's a reason that you're listening yeah. Yeah. um there's a reason why you're drawn you're yeah for sure but we will have within our lifetime there will be certain people around us who are those kind of npcs we call them the non-playing characters that kind of just drift through life without that awareness mm-hmm. not necessarily um desiring to tune into that awareness and that's totally fine yeah, like that's, that's okay. their path for this lifetime mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it could be that you know the next lifetime they've got those lessons to learn um with the changes that need to be made or yeah. you know and that's okay that's so fine but spiritual awakening i would describe it as forming a new sense of awareness that you are the creator of your reality. Mm. Starting to realise the effects of your actions, your thoughts, that you are in control of your life and that everything that you have been conditioned to believe in can be questioned and can be changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It it actually – and, like, on that as well, it's, like – an understanding of conditioning. For sure. Yeah. And like undoing yeah. or knowing, yeah, like exactly what you just the said. Undoing, knowing it's that you unraveling. Can un- yeah, it's unraveling. Yeah. It's a total unraveling. Yeah, you're practically like an onion. Yeah, it's, mm. it's, it's even as simple as just questioning things like, but why do we do yeah. things this way? Why is it that we just blindly follow mm. this? Oh, it's because we've done it. Like we've always done it this way. Yeah. But why, but why? can't that be, can't, why can't that be changed? Yeah. yeah. And who started that? And and where did this come from? And mm. and tell me more. It's yeah. a curiosity. Yeah, yeah, it is. And and once you begin, it's really really difficult to shut that off. Yeah, you're starting to change things. You, yeah, and you intrinsically start to change. Yeah. So within the spiritual awakening itself. It is something that we move through. It's something that's an ongoing process. And it's also something that has somewhat of stepping stones. Mm, Um, They are not stepping stones. We go from one, two, three, four, and that's it. We can, it's not, it's not linear. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is very much that we can move through a cycle, go back from step one to step three, back to step one to two. Um, and when I say these steps, I mean that normally the first step of a spiritual awakening is that dark night of the soul period, um, where we, which we will be explaining. But we move through that and once we come out of the dark night of the soul – it's more of we then start to have an awareness and then we move through a process of hermiting and excluding ourselves and then we move through a rebirth process. So it's it's a constant cycle that we're moving through. Mm. Um, Which we can bounce back and forth and back and forth. hundred percent. Because yeah. so many things pop up, pop up along the way. The that, lessons. Yeah, that's right. It, it And it looks different for everyone. Yeah. yeah. It will look different for everyone. And feel different, I, f- I think. Yeah. Mm. So on that, let's um let's dive into what the dark night of this. I f- you know what? I feel like we need one of our sound buttons here. I don't know which one, but I mean, just do you want me just to like pick it around? That's my. Can someone call me? Call me twice. Call me. Call you twice. Yes. Because that's my actual ringtone. Wait, wait. Okay, everyone, pause. Run. Okay, let me. Let me tell you it's, what's going it's on. It's definitely a law and order SVU moment. Okay. Listen to my ringtone. Demi, call me. Okay. Okay, I'm calling you twice. It's on do not disturb, so ring twice. Now everyone's going to know. <laughs> Are you ready? It's happening, I think. Is it? Oh, my gosh. Silent no. mode. Go. Oh, my God. That was so anticlimactic. Girl. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> oh, wait. No, it's not ring. Okay, do it again. You just have to do it once, though. Oh wait, no, I muted you. Just wait. Do it again. Oh, oh my do god, it again. this is so Virgo oh, energy right two. now. One more two. One more time. Do, 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 do. There you go. Okay, the little dun dun. That's my message tone, and it said miss call from Demi. But we're gonna get into the spiritual awakening <laughs> and the dark night of the soul while my phone fine. is ringing. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Amazing. <laughs> we need to add that onto the. Should we add that on? Yeah. Okay, let me make a little note. Note here. I feel like we should add that in. Okay, yeah. we'll do. Side okay. note. That's gonna be our new um. That's like gonna be one of our new buttons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Add new button. I'm just making. We actually noise. need to. We need to make some some fun sound effects for things. Dun dun. Like I love that. Something very demi. Something very ness. Something very Daniela. Mm. Just. I'm I gonna, feel like oh, your one is gonna be like you know the um fairy the, lights. The fa- the fairy wand <laughs> in like the <laughs> in the Disney movies how it went. Sh- yeah. Actually, no, that was such a bad explanation. But do you know what I'm talking about? I know about? what you're talking about. It sounds like <laughs> if sparkling had a sound. Yeah. Like a sparkling wand had a sound, it would be that sound. We yeah. need to find it. I accept. <laughs> I don't know what my noise would be. Can I have Ooh. a transcript? I would like my transcript to be. In the criminal justice system, sexually based offences are considered especially heinous. In New York City, the dedicated detectives who investigate these vicious felonies are members of an elite squad known as a special victims unit. These are their stories. Dun, dun. <laughs> oh my god, I love you guys. I fucking love you guys. We're always like on the same wavelength. Oh. Always. You knew that was coming. Yeah, I did. That was and coming. I, it's like all of my all of my Thursday nights I watch SVU. Always. It was like preparing me for this exact moment. <laughs> That's it. That is it. Oh my god, amazing. Oh, okay, what were we okay, talking okay, about? The dark night oh, of the back. soul. Yes, can yes, I, yes, yes. Can I yes. um share like something that I just found really interesting that we were talking about pre yeah, like pre we recording storming. Go for it. I when we were talking about Dark Knight of the Soul, I was like, I swear like I've seen someone speak about this, but like someone who's like not necessarily seen as like a like a spiritual quote unquote spiritual person. Yeah. And I was like, I need to find this. I was like, oh my God, it's the holistic psychologist. So a lot of people know Dr. Nicola Perla. She has this amazing book called How to Do the Work. Yeah. And she um in her book How to Do the Work, I swear her preface in the book is the dark night of the soul. And I was like, fuck, I need to find that. So she describes the dark night of the soul as it comes from living our lives disconnected from our authentic core needs, Mm, which I just think As in it's triggered by. It's triggered by, yes, exactly. So I guess it's like coming coming to an awareness that we have been living our lives so disconnected because we've been Mm. conditioned to like do things that don't meet our needs and everything that we perceive to be a certain way it's like everything has collapsed around you oh my god you look at things 
completely so differently. differently. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Do you know what that's just made me think? We as a society have been so conditioned, so conditioned to believe that our ultimate goal in life is to see how much money can we collect? Mm. How much status can I gain? How do I climb the corporate ladder? How do I do these things? And if that's what you at your very, very, very core after doing all the work truly, truly desire in this lifetime, that is great. But if it comes down to you've been conditioned to believe that that is what you need in order to be happy, then are you actually fulfilling your needs if that's what you're trying to gain to fill a void that's within? Yeah. And are you actually happy? And Like are, really, yeah. truly, honestly happy? Mm. That thought was going somewhere else and I kind of lost it mid-sentence, no, but it's going to... Maybe, but maybe, <laughs> I think I, I might have picked up on it. It's like really, and I guess like everyone's goals are different, but the ultimate goal is to live day to day happy in the present moment 100%. with exactly what you've got. Knowing that you can attract more and you can achieve yeah. more, but regardless of whether you have all these achievements or not, you in your absolute core, you're happy. You don't need the things to be happy, right? Yeah. yeah. You you don't need to find happiness in a product or an item or another person or an amount in your bank account because the happiness that you desire already comes within. Yeah. And that's kind of when the realisation within the awakening comes. Mm. It's when we realise, well, actually I can be happy and it's really, really, really simple to yeah. do so. Mm. Like, yes, sometimes the other things can make it a little bit easier – or can create less challenge, but it also isn't the answer to your happiness. Mm, for sure. Yeah. Mm. So on the dark night of the soul itself, I, I guess that in order to understand it, maybe we can give you some background information as to what you might feel throughout that process. And as we're explaining, maybe try to Try to think about a time in your life where you maybe felt those things, whether it was as a teenager, as you were moving through a certain situation in life, or even if you're going through it right now. Sad in return. Sad in return. It doesn't have to just be one moment. You could have experienced it multiple times mm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, but let's let's go over that, the kind of, I guess, symptoms or side effects or cues that might tell you that you're moving through a dark night of the soul. Mm. When when I think about it, I o always think back to my own personal experience. That's m the easiest way for me yeah. to explain things. And thinking back to the first time I experienced this, because there have been many. Mine were all within my Saturn return mm. um, because it stretched across such a fucking long period of time for me. Yours was like four years, yeah, right? Yeah, it was a long It was a long chunk. Like I feel like that was a long yeah, chunk. Yeah, like obviously like Saturn return doesn't go for that long. But if mm. you've got like the shadow phase and yeah. like obviously you were moving through so much. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So if I go back to the point where I can identify, okay, this was the experience. It honestly was like I was and I chose to disconnect completely from everyone and everything around me because I just could not cope. I could yeah. not. It, everything felt like it was too much. I was crying constantly I was locking myself into at that stage it was my office I was locking myself into my office and I was there until all sorts of hours of the evening just crying and not understanding what was actually going on but I was just so angry and so disappointed and so upset with how everything was playing out in my life because I felt like I had no control and nothing was working out the way I'd planned it to be etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm. and I couldn't see out and yeah. at that point, it was just, it was honestly just, if I'm describing it, it was darkness and tears and just frustration. Yeah. Because I couldn't see, I couldn't see anything past what was right in front of me. So every situation around me was replaying in my mind like a movie and all of these things that I, in my mind, had made to, made myself feel like we're falling apart we're just playing on loop on loop on loop and it was just heaviness upon heaviness and that was it yeah for weeks and weeks and weeks mm. do you know what sometimes 
it doesn't make sense because our conscious mind doesn't understand what we're experiencing. Yeah. It is our soul that is crying out for help. Yeah. It feels like a shedding now that I think about yeah. it. Well, that that's yeah. what the dark night of the soul is. It's preparing you to it's re, it's preparing you for the rebirth. Mm. That's, oh, that's a good that's a good yeah. explanation. That's a good explanation. Yeah, it's preparing you to become your most authentic you. What were some of your symptoms? Let's call them that, I guess. Honestly, just like so much. It's not even confusion because I had I had so much clarity in that time, but it was just like, why? Mm. Why are we conditioned to be the way we're conditioned? Like, and it was almost like, betrayal like I feel like my yeah. like everything that wow. I know is a lie wow. yeah that's huge so it was like like a fair bit of like anger came with that as well because it's like that we're made. we're as a society we're conditioned to be so stuck and to look externally for everything and mm-hmm. we don't know our own power yeah. so that that to me was like such a big thing of like just like confusion and betrayal and like anger and yeah frustration as well I was kind of like like this is like just fucked Fucked. yeah yeah Yeah. that's oh I've I've never heard it explained that way I love that Mm. that betrayal yeah because it's like well like how rude yeah like why is it (laughs) that we're being taught these things it's just yeah and like mm. that unfair energy it's it's just not fair it's not fair yeah um and I like when I um had my initial like quote-unquote wake up moment I physically Mm -mm. purged when I got home yeah like I I threw up like I was like so sick and I'm I Mm. honestly I'm not when I'm like sick it usually comes out the other end yeah yeah not that anyone needed to know that but I like very very (laughs) (laughs) I rarely vomit I'm Mm. like you know I'm so sick when I vomit I was just sick to my stomach Yeah. yeah and had like the worst migraine and I was just like I like, like I was like, I, I, I can't, I can't, like, I'm so confused, but That's not a good confused. point as well as that, like, when you're moving through that, the symptoms might Physical. Show, yeah, physically mm. showcase themselves no, on your body or I, come through in a yeah. specific way through your vessel. Yeah, yeah I, mm. I like was so unwell for like a, a day and then I was just like, and then I moved into like, what the actual fuck, like I'm angry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Ness, what about you? For me, I was highly depressed. Okay. Highly, highly, highly depressed. Um, I moved through extreme anxiety. I was on medication, Mm -hmm. um, which, side note, made me much worse. Um, I was just didn't want to get out of bed I was one of those people that was constantly kind of calling in sick for work because I literally just did not want to get out of bed Mm. Um, I felt as though I had no purpose it was very it was very much like what's the point of everything I just want to sleep all day lock me in a dark room Mm. I was probably deficient on absolutely everything like iron deficient vitamin d deficient um constant like I looked like a raccoon (laughs) constant dark circles um yeah just lots of just lots of sadness that Mm -hmm. empty feeling um and for me I was trying to fill that void with you know partying with friends and trying to find joy in things that truly did not bring me joy but were more of a distraction so that constant trying to distract myself because I didn't understand what I was going through. And at that time, I would have just called it depression. I would have said that it's depression. I wouldn't have understood the concept of the dark night of the soul. Mm. Um, but when I look back, I'm like, oh, yeah, there it was. Like that was that was a time that I was trying to fill void, a void with alcohol and friends that had no meaning and, you know, all that kind of stuff yeah. in life. Um, and then I got to a point where I was like, do you know what, like, what am I actually doing? What, what is the point of this? Like, I may as well, if I'm, if I'm doing these things and I'm not happy, why don't I do things that actually make me feel better 
and give it a go. Like mm-hmm. I might still not be happy, but at least I'll be better off. You're trying something different. At yeah, least. like, yeah. and Steps I think right yeah, direction. and I think that nobody can really pull you out of that space except for yourself like yes you can have those people who support you but they're not going to be the reason that you move through it it's everybody's journey everybody's awakening everybody's dark night of the soul is theirs to overcome nobody else is going to do it for you Um, you can have the tools and the resources and the support yes but at the end of the day it's your decision as to whether or not you want to move forward yeah. and what are you going to do to do like to get there yeah and also like if if just to speak on like the uniqueness of everyone's dark night of the soul the three of us have just shared very different examples yeah, like for very sure. different examples like it can show up really like yeah. in any way so there's really no yeah. right or wrong but you kind of know when oh, you're in it yeah actually another thought as well and i was going to say like i don't know about you guys but i can say for sure that i've been through multiple dark nights of for the sure. soul right yeah. mm. and my most recent was actually post giving birth and I've, I've literally just had this realisation that, do you know what? It wasn't postpartum depression, as I had previously believed. It's my soul is now, and my, my human form was in a state of trying to process how can I still be my most authentic self while I have another soul to raise. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Wow. That's, that's whoa. Wow. wow, I've just had this realization because it's like you're relearning all over again. And how are you going to still show up for yourself while trying to not recondition a mm. new soul? Yeah. Wow, that's massive. Yeah. That realization. That was that was another wave. Ooh, mm. interesting. It's like every big lesson in life, yeah. every every dark moment prepares you for another rebirth yeah and and these things can be triggered by unexpected occurrences within your Mm. life as well you might experience a sudden death within the family or a close friend you might you know you might have to suddenly change careers or lose a job or you know um move through an illness yourself a like breakup, all of, a, a friendship breakup, breakup a romantic partnership breakup like 100 percent. it really can happen through like anything absolutely mm. any kind of grief that we move through can pull us back in to that that darkness and that doesn't mean that oh gosh i'm trying hold on let the words come out it doesn't mean that every little set off is going to pull us right back into a place of darkness but also knowing that we can experience the dark night of the soul multiple times and each time it becomes easier and easier to pull ourselves out that's Mm. why we that's why Mm. we move through it so we can become aware that we have the power to shift ourselves out of that space Mm. Thinking back to my first time, I can't remember how I pulled myself out the first time, to be perfectly honest. I have to really do some reflecting. But I can remember on the multiple times to follow that I always used whatever that first experience was. I said, you've, meet, you've been through this before. You know how you have the power to pull yourself out. Yeah. It really is up to you. And each time it was a bit easier. Not like a lot easier. It wasn't like a next day, like fucking back to feeling like Daniela. But it was like being able to shift myself out of that space faster Mm. the second time, the third time, because I know that I've done it or I knew that I had done it before. Take those steps. Yeah. And you know what works for you as well. We say this all the time. Yeah. Mm. Like you know what works for you. So going back to those things that – what did what's just come through? Or – Tell me. Okay, sometimes it can really be as simple as, and I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but it's just come through, but do you enjoy feeling sorry for yourself? That's something that's just come through. Sometimes it can be as simple as, what are you actually gaining from sitting there feeling sorry for yourself? You're, you're not gaining anything. Nobody's going to come in and fix your problems for you. Yeah. So what are you going to do to actually pull yourself out? Yeah. Yeah. And it comes down to the, th- the thing that we say all the time, nothing changes until 
you do you do your mindset is this the life that you want to accept for yourself is this the experience that you want to accept for yourself is this how you want to experience each and every day if not then it is up to you yeah and if it is then that's valid and like cool that's everyone has choice like that's that's you do you yeah but if it's not then it's your responsibility as well to be like okay i i i need to do this for me Mm. And you can even like look at it like what's something like super simple, like what is a super simple way to start? Yeah. Don't overcomplicate it. A daily it. practice, a daily, a daily habit. Even yeah. if it's as simple as getting up and making your bed first thing so you feel like you've mm. accomplished something in your yeah. day. Having a shower even. Yeah. Like go, yeah. like literally going outside for like yeah. five minutes. Go and sun. sit in the sun. I used to reaffirm to myself – everything's going to be okay it's always been it 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 is always okay everything is always okay you know that it's always okay yeah Yeah. and I'd have these conversations with myself I'm like well yeah it's true like if I think back to all of the fucking shit that's happened it's always worked itself out it's always been okay so finding something that you know really anchors those thoughts within and just reaffirming yourself reaffirming yourself it can be as easy as that as well Not sure. as easy. Nothing's like, you know, but you know simple. what I mean. Like simple, simple. as simple that. Simple and simple. easier different. But yeah, yeah. S- simple. As simple as that. Mm. Mm. For, For sure. sure. And I think it also helps to have like someone that you can just freely express to. Because the first few times I was moving through things, I internalized everything. I don't know about you two, but I internalized everything. Oh, yeah. No one knew what was going on. They could physically see on the outside that things were changing. Like my physical body. I don't even know if I've shown you guys, but there was oh, yeah. one point where my whole body from the top of my head down to my feet was absolutely covered in some skin condition that I can't remember the name of now. It was really specific, but it was specific to the point where I had to stay away from people because that skin condition could transfer to those people. Fuck. And I was, I was, I looked like a leopard, like a red spotty leopard. And people knew that there was changes happening. They're like, oh, she's stressed, she's stressed. But because I wasn't expressing what was actually going on within, it just kept building and building and building. Your body needed an outlet. My body needed some form of outlet. And it was only after my skin became like wildly crazy like that. I think it took maybe five months to get my skin under control after that or back to normal. But it's because I started to actually share what I was experiencing internally with someone that I trusted and not for advice, not for anything like that, just to express, let someone know how I was feeling. Yeah. But doesn't that go to show that our bodies are simply just vessels? Yeah, literally, they are. Absolutely. Our our body is Mm. nothing more than a vessel. A vessel which is constantly in communication with us as well. So Mm. our our body is constantly showcasing what is going on on the inside, how we are feeling what we're moving through internally. It showcases the symptoms and signs constantly. The flags are being waved. It's whether we actually are allowing ourselves to identify them, acknowledge it and respond to it. Yeah, Mm, for sure. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so for me, talking to someone really – and also in saying that I made it very clear when I had these conversations, I'm not here for advice – I just want you to listen. Are you able to hold that space? Are you able just to sit here and listen and just, if I cry, let me cry. I had that conversation first. So I created my boundaries of this is what I'm here for. If you're not able to do that, it's totally fine, but that's what I need. Boundaries are very important when you're having those conversations as well because you want to make sure that if you're going to be dropping any heavy bombs, like you want the other person to like kind of, in fairness to them, to like understand what's going on. For sure. Sure. And and give and them a chance, a chance and give well. them a chance to you know mm. prepare themselves mentally. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Mm. Yeah, that's actually a good point because now I'm thinking about other situations that we've experienced where um, things have been shared that are quite vulnerable or personal or heavy, oh. and there hasn't been a warning first. That's n- it's not fair on the other person when mm. th- when that happens. Not at so all. So if if you are speaking to someone or sharing something with someone it is it, it is important we we even say it between the three of us like if we're like having a big vent about something yeah. we always say like don't listen if you're not yeah 
in you don't have space capacity to yeah. listen yeah. to this. Like, yeah, we were always pre-warned. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's common courtesy as well, I feel, because you never know what someone else is already experiencing within themselves with yeah. their own day. Yeah. So throwing things on top sometimes. It's too much. Yeah, and it can be and too it much. And can be a big trigger as well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Little break. <laughs> a little water break. I'm like literally <laughs> just sitting here pondering life now. Oh, well, that's the what's, <laughs> what's going on in your in your mind? What's floating through? I don't know. She's the meme again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm literally the meme <laughs> again. But that's, that's, that can really be what the dark night of the soul feels like. It's about questioning everything that you've already believed in. Mm. Like, mm. you know, it's about realising that things have been masked very differently. Yeah. And when you yeah. have that realisation, oh, so much mm. shifts so much within you I actually remember when I I I can't think of the exact timing of it but when I had like my big one of my big wake up moments when I had that physical purge that's when I just like one of this was like very early in my business days like tarot by demi days and I remember I was like nah I'm shifting the way I do readings to be more empowering to get people Mm. to understand that Mm. they have it's not just like a transactional. Yeah. What's my future? Novelty. It's like what what like I'm going to be helping people to understand that you've got power in your life. You're not. We're not wandering. Yeah. You know? For sure. Because clarity oh. can come through. Mm. Clarity tends to come through afterwards when yeah. you've had time to really think about things from a different perspective and you've allowed yourself to feel all of the feelings that surface when you come to the realization of oh my god things are fucked yeah (laughs) when you allow yourself to move through it then you've given yourself a chance to actually think think about whatever the situation is from a different lens and clarity always comes through for for you it does even if it's not straight away it could be six months later a year later like Ness just having that connection just then about um her personal experience yeah. as well like the clarity always comes through mm. at some like point a or year another and a solid year and a half yeah. later yeah yeah that's okay um something else that I wanted to say that so when you said the thing about Dems when you said the thing about the um like your your moment when you realized it, it reminded me of something that I had seen on Instagram as well I saw this post and I was like, holy shit, like I, we actually don't realise we do this. It, set, it it showed like the everyday life of the average person. Mm. So waking up, you, you might watch TV while you're having breakfast, getting ready for work, whatever. Then you go to work where predominantly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak for the average person obviously this mm-hmm. isn't going to be everybody's situation in life but yeah you go to work for eight hours a day where you're predominantly in front of a computer screen and then from there you go home and then most people will you know make dinner have a shower whatever and then sit on the lounge and watch tv to unwind, unwind. and you're probably scrolling on instagram while yeah, you're watching tv time, yeah. and then you'll get into bed and you'll scroll on your phone until you fall asleep our lives were not created to scroll no. mindlessly on screens or to be in front of screens. And this is where we're getting lost. This is where we have been conditioned to believe that this is all that life can be. Mm. Our lives are so much more than that. And if you've just listened to that and you've gone, holy shit, I do that. Take a step back and have those realizations within as to what you actually want out of life like what is it that you actually want are you comfortable are you happy do you feel like if you were to die tomorrow would you be happy with the life that you've lived Mm. oh i i I instantly you said that and i can see people's reactions and the trigger to that what like what is it that you've achieved for yourself Mm. what what legacy will you leave behind that's that's really important and that that can kind of set off that realization that actually no there are things that need to change I I have been moving through this darkness for so long 
you have got the ability to pull yourself out of it and to step back into that light and to shed all of those layers and to move through this process of rebirth to know that you can create whatever reality you desire Mm. it all starts with the intention to do so Mm. yeah and this kind of reminds me of a conversation that we had it was either in our balance episode or our spiritual hygiene episode where it's like well okay well what are your values and are are you spending your time Mm. and energy in alignment with your values right so like let's like continuing with the example of like the amount of time that we spend on screens if you value family and connection Mm. Maybe rather than scrolling while you're watching TV after dinner, you can FaceTime. Obviously, it still involves screen, but whatever. That's the life that we live. You can FaceTime your mum, see how she's going, or literally turn the TV off and play with your kids if they're awake. Or connection, go for a walk with your family. Go for a walk. Have a picnic in the lounge room. Yeah, Yeah. like there's. It doesn't have to be like this big extravagant thing. It's like we're okay. Well this is a habit right now that's not serving me. What can I replace it with? That is in mm. line with my values. Yeah, love that. If if you're wanting to create more space for creativity, rather than the TV, why don't you paint? Or why don't you write? Or why don't you dance? Whatever. Like whatever, whatever, the, whatever, whatever the fuck it might you want to do. Like, yeah. How is, how is constant binging on screens serving you yeah it's and I can say this for everybody it's It's really not not. Mm. it is really not serving Mm. you it's giving you unfulfilled temporary entertainment yeah Yeah. and I think if we're being honest with ourselves we would all be able to agree with that straight away oh yeah Yeah. like there's nothing wrong with sitting and watching an episode of friends every now and then like you know but if it's if it's consuming your every single day all day you're on to the next the next the next thing the scrolling the scrolling this like if you can't even be mindful while you're watching tv and you need to use your phone at the same time that's a little bit of a problem like that's going to be attacking quite a few people because i've i've been guilty of doing this in the Mm. past as well i I do that and i'll catch myself and go what the fuck am i doing am i watching tv or am i on my phone like what am i doing right now andrew literally said that to me last night we popped on a movie and Within the first two minutes, he said, are you on your phone or are you watching the movie? And I said, I'm on my, uh, no, what did I say? I'm like, I'm watching the movie. He said, okay. And he didn't need to say anything else. He was just saying it to me because then I knew, put your phone on the floor and just like allow yourself to experience this moment. Even recently, like I've been watching TV, but I've been on my laptop doing work. I was like, well, self-reflection. Are you being mindful? No. But you know what? Even, Even going back to watching a movie, for example, right? You can watch a movie with somebody and then you've got like a talking point. So you can still like, you know what I mean? You can still enjoy that and enjoy the experience without feeling guilty. We're not saying like, don't Don't ever watch watch TV. TV. Don't ever go on your phone. Like, absolutely not. Like, you're still going to enjoy it. But be mindful, be present in the moment and do it with intention. Yeah, be be aware of how much time you are dedicating to those things. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because that will really, and like (laughs) circling back, (laughs) that will really help navigate you moving through your dark night of the soul stage because you're starting to become more aware of what you're doing, how you're applying yourself and you then allow yourself to create more meaning in your life Mm. rather than just being on autopilot mode Mm. constantly. Yeah, And bringing yourself back to the present as well because it's very, very easy to get so caught up in whatever this movie is that's playing in your head constantly it's so easy to get caught up with that past story or that future potential story that you're playing out over and over Mm. but you're missing out on what's actually happening in the moment and all that ever matters is the present experience yeah Mm. that's our only constant our only constant is the present So bringing yourself back is really, really important, not just for this, but for literally everything. Literally. Yeah. Mm. I think that's like a good place to go. Yeah, I think on that we're gonna we're gonna head to the reflection question. Let's do it. So to reflect, when in your life have you experienced your own dark night of the soul? And if you are moving through it right now, how can you support yourself to pull yourself out? Bye, guys. Bye.